Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me. Box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Before we get started, I do want to let you know this program is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. And I particularly want to thank Shane and David so much for their support. Uh, we'll send along access to the premium site, as we do with all donations of $7 or more. And they did support us through the P.O. Box, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. And you can also support us at support.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it is time for today's episode of The Saint. The original air date, September the 10th of 1950, and the title is The Horrible Hamburger. The Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Taxi, taxi. Among men who know locomotion best, it's Louie, three to one. Hello, Louie. Hi, Mr. Templer, climb in. Thank you. And whither can I waft you this beautiful evening? Whither can you waft me? Louie, what's wrong? Something has to be wrong before I use a poetical type speech. No, but I... There's a law which says cab drivers can't use good English. Well, no, but so I... So whither can I waft you? Uh, waft me to Spring Lake Road, if you please. Spring Lake Road? I never heard of it. You've got nothing better to do than make, go around making up new streets? Louis, Spring Lake Road is in Westchester. Good. Let it stay there. Louis, I want to go there. Why? I've been invited to dinner by some friends. The food tastes better in Westchester? No, but my friends live there. Okay. Oh, please don't sulk, Louis. Lots of people live in Westchester. Lots of people are crazy. Westchester happens to be a very lovely place. Full of trees, ain't it? The trees are attractive. To who? Apes. Hmm. I'd better tell you how to go. You don't have to tell me. I'll find it. I know, but... Listen, Mr. Templer, I'm a cab driver. Cab drivers never get lost. Louie. Don't say it. We've just passed that oak tree on the left for the third time. Uh, so it's an active tree. It, uh, I thought cab drivers never got lost. Somebody swiped all the street signs. From the trees? So I got lost. So I'll turn my badge in. So my wife will despise me. So my children will go through life ashamed of their old man. So Louis, I'll never... Louie, it's ten o'clock. My dinner invitation was for 8.30. You'll never make it. I don't doubt that, but I'm hungry. Next time you get to an eating place... Don't say any more. Right up the road. Oh, yeah. The Happy Hamburger. Ben Lawton, proprietor. It doesn't look very happy. What has it got to look happy about? I meant the place itself. So maybe it looks a little like if the wolf came around and huffed and puffed. (laughs) You wouldn't have to strain along before it fell down. But food is food. Except when it's a Happy Hamburger, perhaps. (laughs) However, hey, that must be the wolf huffing or maybe puffing. Huh? Here he is. Yeah, savage-looking animal. Yeah. Isn't he? Some wolf. Oh, the poor dog looks as if he hadn't eaten for a week. You... Let's get into the joint before he mistakes me for a T-bone steak. <laughs> oh, I must have hurt his feelings. <laughs> Happy Hamburger is not having a busy night. What can I do for you? Uh, we'd like some dinner. Well, we're kind of closing. But you haven't closed yet. No, I guess we ain't. Uh, said anywhere. I guess the missus will dish you up some food. I'll go tell her. A very enthusiastic type host. Never mind that. I hope they have a well-stocked larder. I hope it 
further occurs to me that they don't have to go out and catch that dog before they have a larder at all. Stop <laughs> hoping a man could get seasick. Of course, this place may be an undiscovered gourmet's delight, but I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> Delighted in this place is still undiscovered. <laughs> uh, what do you think of Mrs. Lawton's cooking? Huh? I don't want to think of it. I'm trying to eat it. <laughs> you finish with your dinner, fellas? Yeah, the dinner is more likely to finish up. Oh, uh, how about dessert? Well, we got blueberry pie and we got huckleberry pie. Uh, what's the difference? Huckleberry pie is a nickel more. Why? Harder to spell. <laughs> <laughs> Which will you have? Apple pie. <laughs> What's the matter, Lily? Dinner. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. However, we won't starve to death while you try to find your way back. I beg your pardon? It wasn't me. That was a tire. Yeah, I was afraid it was. I think maybe... Yeah. Flat? Flat. Uh, fine. We're back in front of that oak tree again. You keep your eye on that oak, Mr. Templer, while I get the spare. Yeah. Want some help? No, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Templer. Mr. Templer. Yes, Louie? Come here. Uh, don't tell me you can't lift the spear all by yourself. Oh, the spear I could lift, but there's something else. You see? Uh, yes. Uh, a hitchhiker. Man in his 40s, perhaps, dressed in farmer's clothing. He must have had a walk in. Terribly tired, Louie. He got dead. Somebody shoots a guy, all right. Maybe you don't like him. But why does he have to stuff the corpse into the trunk of my cab? I don't know. There were no papers of any kind on the body. All right, so he's a total stranger. But why are we heading back to the Happy Hamburg? Because that's where we must have acquired the corpse. It's the only place we stopped. We're out of sight of the car. Unless he was already in the trunk before we left the city. No, no, I checked the tires plus the spare before I picked you up. Then it's the Happy Hamburger. The man was murdered fairly recently anyway. How do you know? Oh, no rigor mortis, body warmth. Never mind, never mind, you know. I'll stay a dope. Hey, Mr. Templer. Yes, Louie? What kind of a welcome you think we're going to get at the hamburger? Mm, it's hard to tell, except that uh, it may not be a welcome at all. Looks like maybe they went out of business. Yeah. There's a house behind the restaurant. That's dark, too. The Lawtons may have gone to bed. It's after 11. It is very late. Maybe we should go to bed. Here comes the junior werewolf again. Yeah, that animal should be fed. But not by me. All the flesh I got, I need. Come along, Louis. Yeah, I'm coming. So is the hound of the basket. Oh, he's not bothering us. So far, he kept his teeth to himself. Suppose he decides to risk a few and see how we taste? And that's a chance we'll have to take. Well... Here goes. Don't look now, but our chum has left us again. I couldn't be more pleased. Hey, you know, if they're asleep, they're not going to love us with a great love. And I'm not at the moment seeking affection. Yes? Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Lawton? That's right. My name is Simon Templer. This is Louie. What do you want? You cooked dinner for us a little while ago. So I cooked dinner for you. Well, since that time, we've uh, had a little trouble. We... Had a flat tire. This ain't a garage. I wasn't referring to the tire when I said trouble. Why don't you say what you're referring to? Well, I would rather your husband were here when I do. He's asleep. Oh, he can be waked. What for? It's a matter of some importance. You still ain't said anything. The matter might be murder. Murder? That's right. Come in. Thanks. Wait in here. The parlor. We shall. It takes time to waken Mr. Lawton. 
He sleeps hard. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid it's necessary. That don't make it easier. Set. I'll get him up and dress. I think the word for her is gracious. And very few women are at their best in the middle of the night, Louie. That's what you think. Would you like... No. Okay. Hey, Mr. Templer, you figuring the deceased we got in the cab was put there by the Lawtons? Not necessarily. They did have the opportunity, but so would anyone else who might have been around the place while we were having dinner. Oh, stop complicating things. It's bad enough. This is some parlor. Yes, I've seen cheerier places. They got a radio, though. No television set. Is that bad? Well, Mr. Templer, what do you think of television? I think of it as infrequently as I can. Hmm. Mrs. Lawton is apparently having difficulty waking her husband. From what we've seen of the guy, how can she tell when he's awake? Maybe our birds have flown the coop. It's a possibility. How can a bird fly a coop? They're in here, in the parlor. Mm-hmm. They can't fly a coop. Hi. Oh, hello, Mr. Lawton. Uh, you didn't have to bother dressing for us. I dress for myself. And don't go tracking mud over the best rug. Set where you are. I'll set where I am. <laughs> Wife tells me you're Mr. Templer. I am. She also tells me you got something to say about a murder. I have. Say it. In a moment. Your wife and you own the Happy Hamburger? You already know that. I noticed quite some farmland behind the house. Yours? Yeah. You farm it yourself? Pretty much. Does that pretty much mean you have help? Sometimes. Hired hand named Webster. Oh, why only sometimes? Well, he up and quit this afternoon. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, he'll be back as soon as he spends his money. You might be wrong about that. Always has before. What are you getting at? Suppose we go outside to the uh, cab, huh? I don't mind. Come on, Emmy. I'm right here. What kind of a man is Webster? Oh, not much account. Works when he has to eat, gets a full belly, stops working. A philosopher, perhaps. <laughs> Ever have any quarrels with him? I don't know, is he, ain't you, Mr. Templer? Perhaps. But is there any reason why your husband should hesitate about answering that question? No reason. No quarrels. Fine. Louis. Yeah? Please open the trunk compartment, will you? Sure. In a second. There's something I'd like to show you, Mr. Lawton. Mr. Templer. Yes, Louis? If you were planning on surprising anybody, give up. What do you mean? Look. Looks like birds can fly coops, only I picked the wrong bird. We have mislaid our corpse, Mr. Temple. So it would appear strange. Say, how about letting us in on this? Mr. Lawton, was your hired hand a man in the middle 40s with brown hair and eyes of stocky build, a small scar under his left jawbone? Hey, that's Webster. You must have met him. What do he have to say for himself? <laughs> we met him, but uh, he didn't have anything to say. We didn't start out being the great loves of the Lawton's life. But I hate to think what they must be thinking of us now. I hate to think of the missing Mr. Webster. Yeah, he didn't even say goodbye. Mr. Templer, what happened to him? I don't know. Corpses rarely are the active type, but uh, the late Mr. Webster may have been an exception. Exceptions like that, I hope, stay away from me. We're in what could easily be an overgrown filling station. Nonsense. Slow down, Louie. This is Expro. Oh, uh, town nearest the uh, Happy Hamburger. <laughs> Place seems to be shut up for the night. They didn't take the sidewalks in, though. Hey, up ahead, the gay white way. <laughs> the drugstore apparently still open. Let's stop there, Louie. Okay. Yeah. Front windows full of harnesses, fertilizer, and yard goods. How did you know it was a drugstore? Well, there's a large sign advertising ice cream sodas in front. Oh, well, that explains it. 
We're thirsty? Only for information. Come along. Mm. Come on. Eee. Joint is crawling with juveniles. Now look at a jukebox. Yeah, so it is. The waitress behind the fountain. It's too public. The waitress? The fountain. Ah. <gasps> Mr. Templer, I just noticed. Behind the cash register. This end. Look it. Yeah, I'm looking. Well, now put your eyes back in their sockets. She's dressed in gingham. She's wearing pigtails and big blue eyes. She's... She's merely the farmer's daughter, Louie. Is that a fact? Hey, maybe she knows a uh, joke. Be still, Louie. She may be able to help us. Uh, is help the word you really had in mind? <laughs> uh, good evening, miss. Hiya, Toots. I beg your pardon? So far, what for? Hmm. That farm ain't what it used to be. Yeah, not to mention the farmer's daughter. And who's the little stranger? Who's the... Oh, oh that's Louie. It's not bad either, but it looks married. Who are you? I'm Simon Templer. I'm Teddy, and what are you doing after I get through here? Uh, well, I... You married? No. What a coincidence. I'm not married either. Well, it happens all the time, but what I wanted Star was... Star closes in half hour. Tell me then. My dear Teddy, I... Look, what do you know about a man named Webster? Dan Webster? Mm, I imagine so. Hired hand out to the Lawtons? Yeah, that's the Dan Webster I had in mind. He wears a private property, no trespassing sign on him. Oh, whose sign? Mrs. Lawton's. Mm, how does Mr. Lawton feel about that? Mr. Lawton has never seen fit to whisper sweet nothings in my shell-like ear. Don't you think they're shell-like? My ears, I mean. <laughs> I hadn't noticed. <laughs> Stop wasting time and do some noticing. Look, I'm almost old enough to be your father. I... Maybe, but you're not my father. Uh, good evening, Teddy. So far, it's a terrible evening. Where are you going? Louie and I have an errand to do. My phone number is 137, in case. In case of what? Your errand is out of town. Goodbye. Wow. I'm afraid wow is exactly right. <laughs> oh. You know, I'm coming to the conclusion they got something in these small towns up in Westchester. <laughs> what you mean they have is Teddy and you're married and we have an appointment. Yeah. Where? The Happy Hamburger. You mean we're going to wake the Lawtons again? I hope not. Then what are we going out there for? We're going to, uh, <laughs> trespass on uh, very private property. I ought to hang a sign with shuttle on it on my can. No, I don't imagine we're going to be coming out here again. You're not breaking my heart. You know, every time we come out to the Happy Hamburger, it gets darker. I think I'll coin a proverb. It's too late. It's always darker before it's lighter. I don't think that'll catch on. <laughs> Happy Hamburger's up ahead. Louie, we have a problem. Oh, thanks for letting me... What kind of a problem have we got? We've got to find a pond, a brook, or perhaps a lake. You got a sudden desire to go swimming? No, not swimming. You forget something, Louie. I always forget something. What is it this time? Ponds, brooks, or lakes create mud. Oh, thanks a lot. Tonight, I don't need any mud. Call me hypersensitive. I just don't need any mud. You better stop the car under these trees. Okay. You know, uh, about that mud, I yes. suspect you're mistaken. That's because you got a suspicious nature. Besides... Well, we better get started, Hey, we're heading away from the house. How true. Why? We're looking for... I know, I know. Yeah. And they rarely occur in houses. Okay, okay. Uh, does this watery object you're looking for have to be any place in particular, or are we surveying Westchester County? Mm, it has to be on the Lawton's land. Oh, well, that helps, yeah. Probably they got 139 acres. And in the dark, how are we going to search it? I understand hazel twigs don't work anymore, Andy. Hmm? That hound would out of home again. I hope he goes away. Don't be silly, Louie. We we'll want to meet up with him. You'll do all the wanting by yourself. Why? Because he's going to be a hazel twig. What is? Mm hmm. Hey, wait a minute. You mean he'll help us find water? That's right. Well, what is all this excitement about water anyway? Among other things, Louie, water washes away blood. Tell you a secret, Mr. Templer. I 
I never liked hikes. It can't be much longer. That dog is definitely leading us somewhere. Oh, sure, sure. Probably to a bone he buried last month. I don't... He's done it. Are you referring to the junior-sized lake? That pond, yes. Now what? Oh, fine, fine. He went swimming. We got to go swimming, too? No, we can walk around the pond. We're at one end of it. Yeah. And the... Hey, look at that unground hunk of hamburger has stopped. Yeah, just beyond the pond in a small clump of trees. We're joining them? Of course, come on. Why? Because the land around the pond is muddy. All right, so the land around the pond is muddy. This fills me with a great oh, joy. The dog's not moving. He's waiting for us. Also fills my shoes with mud. Hey, you know what happens to trees when they die? Yeah, they become telegraph poles. Stop swiping my jokes. Hey, that dog is going nuts. With joy. What has he got to be so happy about? He hasn't even gone near a tree. He's digging at the ground. Oh, sure, yeah, that bone he buried last month. You know what we're going to do, Louie? I got an unhappy idea. We're going to copy the dog and dig. Right. I'm already looking for something to dig with. What are we going to dig for? Something the dog lost? No, something we lost. Templar, couple of feet more, I'll be in China. Oh, don't be silly. You can't get to China by digging straight down. Oh, you can't, huh? Where you get is Australia. Nobody ever tells me things like that. Hey. What is it, Louis? From where you are, you can't see. But from down here... Well, I'll come to the edge of the hole. Mm. Well, Louis, we've kind of found that corpse all over again. Tell that dog to shut up, will you? I don't feel so good. No, I'll give you a hand, Louie. Help you climb out of the hole. Hey, that sounds like a car backfire. Road's too far away. Never mind climbing up here, Louie. I'm going to join you down there. Hey, what's going on? And I'm not going to like the answer. Someone is having target practice with us for targets. Ooh. I could see a vague figure at the other side of the pond, too dark to identify. Oh, there goes that hound that walks like a horse. Probably figured it was too crowded down here. Hey, Mr. Templer, I hate to mention this, but if the boy with the gun kind of wanders over yeah, here... Yeah, I realize that. Louis, this grave we're in isn't level. The edge on your side is lower than the one facing the pond, which means you can climb out without being seen. Make for the trees, then for the road, your cab... If you police me, maybe so, but then what are you going to do? Stay here. Otherwise, our gun shooting friend will head for the cab, too. But while I'm getting help, you are liable to be getting killed. Uh, that's a chance we'll have to take, and believe me, I'm not taking it with any great joy, but we have no alternative. You'd better hurry. Okay, Mr. Templer. But look, at with the way the taxi business is, be careful. I don't want to have to look for another fare on account of you got shot in the woods. What on earth are... Teddy! Uh, is it fun down there? Because if it's fun, I'll come right down. Teddy, stay where you are. I'll... Oh. Hmm. May not be very fancy down here, but it is cozy. <laughs> Simon, you didn't tell me you weren't alone. I didn't have a chance to. You better not look at him too long. Simon, what on earth are you doing down at the bottom of a grave with Mr. Lawton? He is Mr. Lawton, isn't he? Well, of course he is. Why do you say it in that funny way? Because we were supposed to think it was Dan Webster, except that I hadn't thought so, not for a while, and, uh, he was murdered, Teddy. Did you murder him? No. Well, I'm certainly glad to hear that, because you're very handsome. But after all, even handsome fellows shouldn't murder people. What they should do is... Teddy, Dan Webster, along with Mrs. Lawton, murdered Mr. Lawton. Well, that's not very surprising, because they did have a crush on each other, and nobody loved Mr. Lawton anyway. They must have planned to leave town immediately after the murder, but, uh... Teddy, did you happen to notice a dog about not to mention Dan Webster? I heard somebody running and a dog barking before I found you. Mm, dog must have frightened Webster off. So that's all right. How did you find me? I noticed your car outside the Happy Hamburger. I lived on the road a bit and was going home. So I knew you were someplace around. And when I was a little girl, I used to be a Girl Scout. 
Because you wanted to learn how to tie knots or build campfires? No, because I wanted to learn how to track a man. I had a feeling it would come in handy. It has. Mm. Did anybody call for a cab? Louie. Oh, excuse me, Teddy. <laughs> Hello, Louie. Hello, Louie, he says. Uh, I thought you'd gone to town for hell. I figured it would take too long. Figured maybe I could get behind the villain and surprise him. So instead, Mr. Pempley, you surprise me. <laughs> Back to the hamburger again. We're hungry? No, except perhaps for justice. Simon, the Lawton's car is out front. Mrs. Lawton's in it. <laughs> Come on, into the cab. Over this way. And be as quiet as you can. All right, Simon. Uh, quiet. Can't see us under the trees here. Turn your ignition on, Louie. Be ready to start the car. Okay. It's ready. <clears throat> Webster's coming out of the house. Suitcases. They're getting into the car. There they go. Louis. I know. Follow them. They may not notice they're being followed. Supposing they do. Well, we'll have to chance that. Okay, but look, I don't mind so much being shot myself. But don't forget, this here cab belongs to the company. I can't afford to get bullets in it. Coming into Exbrook, what now, Mr. Templer? Teddy, at this hour of the night, no one would be about, am I right? It is kind of late. The police station is where? The next block. Uh, in that case, catch up with them, Louie, quick. Well, I should have a collision with them? Preferably a small-sized one. You're a good driver, Louie. Run them off the road. But the cab... Never mind that. Hit them as soon as we get opposite the station. Okay. I only hope it'll show on the meter. We're getting close to them. Uh, and here goes... Nice going, Louie. Oh, didn't even scratch your fender. They weren't those cops polite, which is very unusual. And uh... Louie, be still. Why? I have to explain things to Teddy here. From what I heard, she don't need... Louie! I shut up. Please, Simon, tell me. Well, you see, Teddy, Mrs. Lawton and Webster planned to kill Mr. Lawton and then leave town, figuring no one would ever know. How did they expect to get away with it? Actually, their idea of placing the corpse in the trunk compartment of the cab was clever. Normally, the body wouldn't have been discovered for days and then miles away from Exbrook. But instead, you got a flat and came back. Ah, a very lucky flat, but not for Mrs. Lawton and Webster. She got quite a shock when she saw our smiling faces, but she kept her head and sent Webster out to remove the body from Louie's cab and hide it. The only mistake she made was being too housewifely. What do you mean? Oh, when Webster returned, her instinctive reaction was to tell him not to track mud on the rug. If he'd been asleep in the house, there shouldn't have been mud on his shoes. Therefore, I concluded he'd been out. I see. And when the body was missing, I knew that he'd buried it. The mud also told me the burial place had to be near water. And Mr. Lawton's dog led you to the burial place, and and that's where I found you, Simon. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, it was. But, uh, we were kind of interrupted back there, so, uh... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Louie! I'm not hearing a thing or seeing a thing in my rearview mirror. Louie, we've reached Teddy's place. Stop the car. Okay. But, Simon... My dear, you're very lovely, but you're very young, so I'm afraid this is where the farmer's daughter goes back to the farm. You've been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, our cast tonight included Louise Erickson, Noreen Gamil, Arthur Q. Bryan, and Dave Light. Larry Dobkin was Louie. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of The Saint. Good night.
Tonight's script of The Saint was written by Louis Vitties. The music was composed and conducted by Vaughn Dexter. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Safier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of His Kind of Woman. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer is Don Stanley. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Wednesday marks the return to the air of that delightful couple, Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. As more good times when the Halls of Ivy with Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman returns to NBC next Wednesday. Make a date. Here are the Halls of Ivy next Wednesday evening. The chimes are your invitation. Next, it's Sam Spade. Then an hour-long drama on Theater Guild on NBC. Welcome back. Well, I continue to appreciate just the sheer uh, number of roles that Arthur Q. Bryan is getting here. Particularly noteworthy for those of us who primarily remember him as Elmer Fudd. Uh, and I did find that whole part about cabbies not getting lost and really knowing a way, their way around interesting because that's been something I've traditionally held to. Uh, though in the last uh, couple of times I've taken cabs, I don't do it too often, I've been very surprised to find that in the 21st century we have cabbies who don't actually know their way around the area and are actually totally dependent on the GPS. Though I don't know, in this case, that's probably a little bit of 21st century uh, knowledge that would have benefited Lowy. But at any rate, that'll actually do it for today. We'll be back tomorrow with Crime and Peter Chambers, and join us back here next Monday for another episode of The Saint. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter, Radio Detectives, and... 